Hello everyone and welcome. Today is Ash Wednesday. Unbelievable that Lent is now here. As you probably already know, Lent of course means spring. We all need a new spring in our lives and this is really a precious time. And um, the ashes that we wear of course symbolizes our mortality. And it may sound kind of like, uh, you know, negative, you know, our mortality. But the truth is, until we face the reality of our death, the reality of our mortality, if you will, we don't really live well. And we live in a culture that denies death, they don't want to think about death. But the truth is, we're all going to die, maybe sooner than we think. And once we accept that fact and turn our lives over to Christ, who is the source of eternal life for us, then we actually live better. What I mean by that is once we face the fact that everything is ending, that everything in a sense becomes more precious. Every life is precious. Every moment we have with the people we love are precious moments. So maybe during this time of Lent, we might get a deeper sense of that in our own spiritual lives. Because I think sometimes we focus too much on the negative part of Lent, right? And there is that piece of it, the disciplines, we're giving something up, that's what we say to people. What are you giving up for Lent? What are you gonna give up for Lent? And that's a good thing to do, to deprive ourselves of different things, but the truth is we need to do some things for Lent as well. Does God like us to like go through pain? I'm not gonna give, I'm gonna give up desserts or give up this or that or the other thing. Does God like us to feel that pain? It's not about that. What God likes, what God loves, is a closer relationship with us. And Lent's a time for us to remove, there's the negative part, let go of the stuff that's getting in the way of a relationship with Christ and to bring into our lives those things that enhance our relationship with Christ. So the deeper question I think really is, what's keeping me from a deeper friendship with Christ? What do I need to remove from my life that will give me a deeper friendship with Christ? What do I need to bring into my life that'll give me a deeper relationship with Christ? And keep it simple. And the church keeps it very simple. The readings for Ash Wednesday are always the same. What do they talk about? Three things mainly, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Prayer, our relationship with God, our communication with God. Fasting, letting go of the things that are getting in the way of our relationship with God. And almsgiving, do some kind of good deed, do something positive for Lent. So bring it to prayer. Did you ever ask Jesus what he wants you to do or give up for Lent? Ask him, go into prayer first and say, Lord, what is it that I need to do so you and I can be closer? And if you sit in quiet for a little bit, something's gonna come up and he'll reveal it to you. Lord, what's getting in the way of my relationship with you? I had a friend of mine years ago, he put floors in for a living and on his phone, he had this mechanism where he actually could have bells go off. And every hour, a little bell went off and reminded him to pray. And sometimes he would leave the place where he's working, you know, at the house, and he would go like into his truck and read a little meditation for two minutes and then go back in and work again. Take a little break and pray. But even the sound of that bell would just make him get focused like, ooh, am I aware of God right now? If he was in kind of a stressful moment, that ringing of that bell made him say, okay, let's snap out of this. Let's change my attitude and look at this differently. Anything that we can do that way is a positive thing. Those who are into the internet or whatever, or into your phones, some positive things is to get a positive app that has something on there spiritual. One that I can recommend greatly is called Hallow, H-A-L-L-O-W. It might cost about five bucks a month or whatever, but there are so many different prayers and meditations in there. It's really wonderful. And if you ever heard of the series, The Chosen, about the life of Christ, some of the actors in that, the uh, Jonathan Rumi, who plays Christ in that, he prays the rosary in there, and then you can pray the rosary with him. Sometimes I find that helpful. You ever had that day where you just don't really feel like praying? Things are dry, I just don't feel like it. We all get those times, the greatest saints did. And sometimes when it happens to me, I'll just, I'll just hit the, the rosary button on there and, and have Jonathan uh, pray with me. And that way it sort of pulls me along because I don't really feel like praying that day. Sometimes that's helpful to get us into that prayer. And again, something positive, you know, all worried about, you know, giving things up. One positive thing you can do is get together with your family or with a friend and watch the series, The Chosen. You get it on, you know, Netflix or whatever, Prime. You know, watch a lot of other stuff that just takes up time. It's just entertainment. Watch something positive and talk to people about it afterward. That can really enhance your prayer life. It's a beautiful thing. You know, the other thing I like to you know, mention, because your prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, doing something positive, I'd really like to uh, push the rice bowl that we have. And every church in the diocese has a rice bowl. 
It actually was started from a priest from our diocese, Monsignor Cole, and it has spread to the entire United States. And it's just putting a little bit of money, you know, into that little box and bringing it to church or whatever. But check it out, whatever parish you belong to, and uh, do the rice bowl. What you do is you eat a meal that's not as great as other meals. You don't have steak one night or maybe hamburger or just something, macaroni and cheese. But have a lesser meal and take the money that you would have spent on a better meal and take that money and give it to the church, which will end up going to the poor. And that's a way to connect to the poor. So as you're eating a lesser meal, you may feel hungry you know, later that night, that hunger can actually be a hunger to pray for those who go hungry every day. Sometimes we don't think about that. I think I might have mentioned this uh, some time ago. I was doing some intermittent fasting and things and you know, I wasn't eating between meals. And one evening I was driving home and I just, you know, whatever I was doing and I was feeling really hungry. And I knew I couldn't eat when I came home because I, I was fasting. And part of me was getting a bad attitude about that. Like, what's the big deal? Does God care if I go home and eat some ice cream tonight? You know, all that, the bad attitude. And I'm driving along with this bad attitude and poor me and I'm hungry and I came across that billboard. And the billboard said something like, one in four children in our country go to bed hungry every night. And that just stopped me. And like, Pat, you can't even give up like a little bit of hunger here and feel that for the sake of all these children who go hungry. We don't always think about that in our culture and that connects us to real people, you know, to allow ourselves to feel that. And then that became a little bit of a mantra for me when I felt those hunger pains is just to say to myself, it's okay to feel hungry. That somehow it's like a terrible thing, oh my gosh, I'm hungry. No, it's okay to feel hungry. And the truth is this, a lot of times we eat as part of comfort food. Sometimes you ever find yourself eating when you're not really that hungry? You just wanna feed the feeling. Go deeper into your spirituality and allow that feeling to surface that you're running from. Because our deepest hunger is really for God. And when we feel the physical hunger, it can remind us of the deep hunger we have for God. All those desires and things we run to, whether it's you know, drinking or drugs or entertainment or everything on you know, the internet with Facebook and Twitter and whatever it is we're checking out, our text messages, a lot of that is feeding the emptiness inside and it never works. We need to stop, allow ourselves to experience that emptiness and invite Jesus into that emptiness. That's the beginning of the prayer. That's the fasting we need to do is let go of the things we're trying to fill ourselves with that are artificial. And then to turn to almsgiving, to give to those around us, whether it's our time, our treasure, or our talent, to be aware of the people around us. This Lent, keep it simple. Look at your prayer life. Ask God what you need to fast from so you can be closer to him, what you need to bring into your life to be closer to him. And open up your heart to some kind of almsgiving, giving some charity. And consider rice bowl. Eat a little bit less. Take the monies that you would have spent on a better meal and give it to the poor. And that connects us all as people because we all are really connected. Lent means spring. We all need a new spring in our lives. Allow God to touch your heart through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. God bless you.